welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of June 1st. I have you on the first of the month. Very exciting. 2023, of course. Good morning, your host, Elijah. Having a solo episode today, of course, as you can find it. And we have quite a bit to cover, so I don't really want to delay for too long, as I, you find me, actually, in a beautiful Georgia afternoon. Very pretty outside. It's been very, like, warm. It's not too cold, not too hot. It's been very nice. Very nice. I hope this finds everyone listening well. I just finished watering my garden. I have a... I'm going to say it. A thriving garden. Completely thriving. Very excited. Be uh, bell peppers, tomatoes. Got some flowers. Because I'm a big bee guy. Love bees. So whatever that helps the bees and the butterflies and all the, you know, the pollinators out there. Very important to the ecosystem. Whatever helps them. I'm going to put it in the ground and I'm going to help them out. Let's get into the show. Not so rapid fire. MetaQuest 3 VR headset has been announced. They had a MetaQuest showcase thing that happened today. I'm not a big MetaQuest, so... And you're also not coming to me for your VR takes, right? So... Let's go over these little VR headset facts that we know. It's launching this fall. There's $499.99 for the 128 gigabyte version. Very expensive compared to what it used to be, of course. But they did raise the price on the Quest 2s. This is the highest resolution display of uh, any of their line. Next generation Snapdragon chipset. This is more than tw uh, two times as powerful as Quest 2. And it's 40% slimmer. It's pretty impressive that they're able to get it so small. That, that's one thing that Quest can do, right? It's, it's small, compact, easy to wear. It doesn't have to be tied to anything. It's a standalone device. And actually, I believe, still the only standalone device on the market. Everything else, you need something. The Vive, the Index, PSVR 2. Everything you need something else to use, right? So I'm always impressed with the MetaQuest things, but never enough to actually get one. And, of course, they do have redesigned controllers as well. I saw a picture. They didn't seem too, too different. But, of course, check out a quick Google search to see if you like any of it. Final Fantasy 16 might not have a day one patch. This is via Game Informer. There is an interview with Hiroshi. Sorry, Hiroshi Takai. I don't believe that when I see it. And even if it doesn't have a day one patch, that doesn't really instill me with any confidence. I see a lot of people out there that was like, oh, they're very confident about this or happy and these things. And although if this is true and they don't need anything to come out, I am impressed. But too many games launch with problems. I'm going to have to see this game come out. And of course, I'll be there day one to play this game. So you will hear from me if this is as advertised. This is from a internal call. I'm actually going to read this from. Steven Satilla's kind of brief thing I saw. Ubisoft says it will increase the number of developers on Assassin's Creed franchise by 40% to, quote, feel its ambitious expansion, end quote. The company's head count is down from 20,700 in September to below 20,000. That is, of course, to office closures, layoffs, and, quote, tight controls on recruitments, end quote. Not shocking as their lineup is incredibly dense with Assassin's Creed. They're going back to the motto of let's just make Assassin's Creed for a while. They, I assume they need this for revenue and kind of get back to the basics to find themselves. They've kind of lost their way. We had a very strong Ubisoft for a very long time and they just kind of fell on their face again. And we're seeing them try it again. Let's see if they nail Final Fantasy every time. Of course, that fell all apart around Assassin's Creed Unity time. This was around 2013-2014 time. This is where peak Ubisoft just kind of fell apart. And we got a renaissance of them, I feel like. But they quickly went back to being a mess. Not releasing games. Skull and Bones. Beyond Good and Evil. Where they swear these two games are still coming. We have to believe it when we see it. Who keeps texting me? You guys are going to you see. My wife keeps texting me. I'm going to make sure it's not an emergency. It's not. Just asking for dinner plans. We're not. I'm not sure what we're gonna have for dinner. If I'm being honest. ESRB rates stray for Xbox platforms. It's confirming a launch on Xbox soon. 
I saw this going around. Nothing really else, much else to add. We know it's going to be coming soon. It's just a matter of when. It could be a day and date launch when the Xbox has their showcase very soon. That could very well be the case. Last week's rumor roundup was, of course, true. If you've been on any social media or anything like that, Mortal Kombat 1 is real, and we got a full debut trailer for the game, and the date is September 19th. It will launch on current-gen console hardware, including Switch and PC. More info is out about the PlayStation Accessibility Controller, and has an official name, the Access Controller. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom sold 10 million copies in three days. Always very impressive. That thing is going to be selling bananas. EA Sports College Football will pay the players for the likeness in the upcoming EA Sports College Football game. This is this is good to hear because this is the entire reason EA Sports College Football kind of went away. They couldn't really play players. They had to stop um, putting player likeness in it because they couldn't pay them. So they had to give them just blank faces and people had to like put it in themselves. It was a mess. Now they can finally pay them, which is good. I don't understand why they just didn't do this to begin with. I I understand it was uh, a big problem for a long time. And luckily, we have moved past it. Deviation Games was hit by a layoff, assumably from a PlayStation project that Deviation Games was working on. This was found by many outlets as many of the people laid off took to LinkedIn to announce their departures. Unclear if the game will be canceled or if it will continue unabated, but Last Stand's media's Colin Moriarty stated on a recent episode of Sacred Symbols that he is confident that the game has been canceled as he received word of the layoffs before these events, but was not sure what to do with the info from the source. He also wasn't sure it was real, too. So, not much else to add here. It seems like PlayStations didn't enjoy what they looked like. They probably saw something that they didn't like. Either they missed a milestone or they maybe it showed up by surprise and were like, hey, let's you know see your project. Looked at it over, said nope, and canceled it. And there's a word that PlayStation is really, 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 really getting granular and not micromanaging. That's too that's too much. But they're really revising their projects and what they're working on right now. And we're seeing that recently with all these rumors of this thing's canceled, this thing's canceled, or they stop working. And it's hard to comment if it's good or bad because we don't know what the product looks like. We also don't know what it looks like over there. We don't know. We don't know if it's good or bad. We don't know if this was a dumb decision or a wise decision. Who knows? We can only assume it's good because PlayStation right now is in a good spot. So we can only assume what they're doing is working until it doesn't. Maybe in three or four years, we'll be like, well, maybe what they were working with the deviation was their fault. I don't know. This this probably will go unheard. Unfortunately, we probably won't know anything about this story. An earnings report by Square Enix has real plans to, quote, consider M&A, this is, of course, mergers and acquisitions, creating new studios and taking minority stakes, end quote, to bring in more, to bring in more external development resources. Cool. We constantly see Square Enix trying to change the game in terms of what they were doing. We saw this with, of course, their sale of all of their Western, pretty much all of their Western studios, aside from very few studios and we're seeing them saying hey we're say we saved that money we're gonna hoard it we're gonna release all these games and i mean they're releasing so many games they released a bunch of games they're gonna probably use all that revenue pull it together and get ready to try and either make studios maybe get a merger and acquisition that we haven't seen them merge with anyone since they were both square and enix of course square soft and, and that was in the in oof 2003 or four when was when did square have that merge square soft merger let's see this let's find together let's find out together. see square soft merger so yes yeah, now it's merger oh this is such an old website i love it this looks cool uh let's see in a deal worth 727 million dollars it's pennies now japanese to them Japanese game makers Enix has announced plans to acquire Square Co. Ltd. The companies hope that by combining operations, the resulting firm will be better positioned to compete against the pressures of intense competition and rising development costs. Any of that sound familiar? Quote, we are going on the offensive with this merger. This will make our strengths complement each other. End quote. This is Square Eni Square President Yochi Iwata told writers. The merger is to be finalized on April 1st of 2003. 
and result in a new entity of Square Enix. Wow, you can almost cut and polish that and change a couple names and you have pretty much exactly what we have right now. We see rising developing costs, we see them interested in mergers and acquisitions, and that's something that we could see happen right now. They we, they could merge or merge with anyone. I mean, of course, <clears throat> I, I of course it would be Japanese in ma- nature, so they wouldn't just merge with any American studio, I don't believe. I also don't think they're interested in being bought by an American studio. I think really only Sony could really talk them into that. And I don't think we were worried about them going to anyone like um, the Saudi Investment Fund or the Tencent side of things, just because I don't think they're interested in that. I think they're big fans of the Japanese culture that they've kind of thrived on. I think that's kind of obvious how they've operated. So I don't think we have any worries about Square Enix. I actually used to be worried, but all of their movements and planning and how they've conducted business tells me that they're really worried with kind of staying at home. I don't think that's really going to change. We'll see. And as a reminder, this is a kind of catch up week as we had the PlayStation showcase. That was the show for that week. So we're kind of taking up all the stories from that week as well into this week. So you might hear some things that are semi old to you. But I never covered it on the show, so I would like to cover it on here. Hopefully, you don't mind too, too much. And, of course, timestamps below if you'd like to skip anything. Let's go into what have you been playing. Of course, this isn't a question for me. This is a question for you at home. What have you been playing? Now, I've been playing Legend of Zelda? Tears of the Kingdom. That's really the only thing I've been honestly playing. The game is huge. This is going to take a long time for me to really keep until i i think i beat it i I'm, I'm i could beat it at really at any point i'm actually on my last i'll say regional phenomenon i won't say anything else i'm not gonna spoil the game here but there's other things i still want to do everyone's saying that you can build a house or something i want to do that i see that all over online i want to do i want to find and figure out a way to do that there's other things i want to do in the game there's just so much i want to do so i'm really no closer to beating it than I was last week, but I've done way more, if that makes sense. I hope you understand what I mean by that. Aside from that, I don't really have anything else. I've been playing Destiny 2. This season isn't really great. Uh, If I'm being serious, uh, the seasonal activity stuff is pretty lame. The new dungeon was great. It's funny that uh, the entire seasonal thing was incredibly bad. And then we get probably the best dungeon they've ever made. So it's like... Well, I wish you could just kind of be like merge these things better than having one of your worst things ever in this seasonal activity called salvage and one of your best dungeons, um, which was a uh, ghost from the deep. Jesus, I, th- I think that's what it is. Sorry, I forgot its name. I'm working on the solo flawless for that dungeon right now. Be slowly doing that over the next week or so. Aside from that, that's really it. I'm going to be paying Diablo soon, of course, in uh, Street Fighter six tempting to buy i'm not sure if i'm going to i'm I'm right on the edge i think i will just because i love street fighter i love fighting games and it's been a long time since i really got to play with one so i probably will play this street fighter because it looks so good rumor right up and of course tell me what you've been playing at home comment below tweet at me at amy i'm a thousand i'd love to hear it rumor right up according to one of the sources of the alleged persona 3 remake we'll be seeing an announcement for the remake at a press conference in June. Didn't seem like they knew where it was. This is a loose rumor going around. It just seems like that might be the case. I, this is one of those things where I report it to you. We'll see if it comes true. And according to a that same person, I saw this today. This was on Reset Era. Uh, the person who leaked Persona 3 remake says that Final Fantasy IX remake will be PlayStation exclusive. The marketing will also be exclusive to PlayStation and it will not be coming to Switch. So we'll have a similar situation what we had with Final Fantasy VII Remake with Final Fantasy IX. Now, I wanted to read this from Game Rant. Sony was holding back with the PlayStation Showcase. This is by Dominic... Oh, I'm going to mess this up. Hopefully I won't. Dominic Bosnike. Bosnunk. Oof, probably messed that up. Sorry about that. Multiple industry insiders have reported that Sony was holding back with the latest edition of its uh, PlayStation showcase. Their color merged online following a mixed response to the event. Of course, we all know these things. Let's go down a little bit. Established industry insider Tom Henderson 
Sinkly took online to suggest that Sony has been holding back with the PlayStation Showcase. Many of the titles from the event are pretty much ready, end quote, even though they are yet to be treated to gameplay reveals and release dates. Henderson reported on May 25th. Soon thereafter, another known leaker known as The Snitch, this is a very big leaker, said they were surprised to see Sony choose to omit several AAA games that are on the horizon from his PlayStation Showcase lineup. Elaborating on claim, the snitch stated that another PlayStation PC port is currently slated to release in July, adding that it's, quote, super weird, end quote. This game wasn't present at the May 24th event. Broadly speaking, the notion that a major publisher would hold back on announcing near-finished products isn't outside of the realm of possibility, and it goes on and on. You should actually go check this out. This is pretty well written, although I did kind of tell you the meat of it, so I apologize for that game rant, but you can go read, if you would like, the rest of the article. I will not spoil the article here. I, I want to quickly comment on this. It does feel like that, right? I'm not the only one, and clearly I'm not. They actually have hard proof. I just have a feeling. This didn't feel like what they had. There's just no way. I've refused to believe that. We only saw, really, three or four PlayStation projects. Everyone else has no relation to PlayStation. The reason that Xbox tweet got so... I wouldn't say viral. It didn't really go viral, but it saw a bunch of eyes. Uh, and if you missed this, Xbox released a kind of picture of uh, all of the games that were announced at the showcase that will be on Xbox. It was like 10-ish games, I believe. A little more. And everyone was like, oh, wow. Like, all of this and barely any of them were exclusives. It feels like this was so easy for PlayStation to come out and just, boom, knock it out the park. Everyone was expecting that, and pretty much no one got that. So I am inclined to believe all these people. And, of course, Tom Henderson, no slouch when it comes to knowing uh, in industry news. Don't see a reason to not believe him here. And, of course, the snitch is also very, very well known. Let's we'll see. This got me very excited. New, new Xbox rule. Now, I'm going to actually save this for last. Let's let's go through. These other are, are much bigger news. I don't want to lose anyone at home. The new Bioshock is in development hell. Now, this has been debunked by many people. This was one from... And we don't actually go through debunks many, but I wanted to bring this up. So, oops, leaks. I don't know who this is. Didn't hear from them before, but I saw this. New Bioshock is in development hell. They had a big Twitter thread saying a bunch of things. Just a bunch of stuff. And many people came out and were like, uh, no. Jason Stryer said uh, himself came out and were like, I mean, Bioshock, it's a Bioshock game, so it is in some sort of development trouble, but to say it's in hell is quite extreme. I am inclined to believe Jason Schreier over this random person. If you would like, you can still go read the thread and, you know, make it for yourself and then go see the comments about this specific rumor. I have nothing else to add as it seems to be pretty weak. Now, this is a Mortal Kombat 1 roster leak. I will have the... What is this? Stop that. Sorry about that. I will have the um, timestamps below to skip this, if you do not want to be spoiled about the Mortal Kombat Combat Pack 1 roster. So Amazon Italy accidentally put up what was in Combat Pack 1. I'm going to read it right now. And if you would not like to be spoiled on who is in the game, check out the timestamp below. But the Combat Pack 1 includes the following. There are six playable characters that will be added. Quan Chi, Omni-Man from Invincible, Ermac, Peacemaker from, of course, the Peacemaker H uh, HBO. Yes, HBO Max show. Takata and Homelander, of course, from the Amazon video series called um, The Boys. And then there will be five cameo characters. Tremor, Johnny Cage, Chameleon, Mavoto, Farah, and a skin of John Va John Claude Van Damme. Now, apparently cameo characters are relevant characters some of them I, I believe are new but they will have like some sort of celebrity tie-in so like 
there was the rumor that Megan Fox is in this game, I believe. So, assumably, Megan Fox will play one of the characters listed in the cameo pack. Cool. Uh, Johnny Cage being a cameo, maybe that'll be from the movie. I'm not really sure. And I'm not sure. I don't I'm not remembering off the top of my head. I'm actually checking the Reddit uh, post right now just to see. It doesn't seem like anyone had. No, excuse me. The. Hmm. Oh, I see right here. So pretty much. Yeah, they're just echo fighters. So they're not really. Full on characters, the Johnny Cage skin will be a John Call Van Gnam skin. So it's probably, yeah, okay. So it looks like they will not really be standalone characters. They'll just kind of be Echo characters. Similar to, oh my God, similar to, what was that one thing that like kept releasing stuff, but they were like Echo. Oh, uh, Super Smash Bros. Super, Super Smash Bros. had characters that were just pretty much copies of another character, but they had a different skin and they had maybe one or two different moods. So it seems like they're having a similar thing here as well. Kotaku has sources telling them that the Ubisoft Star Wars project being developed by Massive, of course, they're known for Division 1 and 2, has a project internal date of early 2024. This is, of course, incredibly early compared to what I think many of us expected. This is from Kotaku's article. Quote, two sources tell, uh, not quote, of course, sorry. Uh, this is a cut from their article. Two sources tell Kotaku that development on Project Helix, which seems likely to include some form of interplanetary space travel, hasn't been progressing well in hopes for high internally that the game could be Ubisoft's first non-Assassin's Creed blockbuster hit in some time. But they also say that the company's goal to release the game within the current fiscal year is probably too ambitious. They still expect it to ultimately slip to sometime in the following fiscal year, which runs from April 2024 through March 2025. So they're slated for much earlier. No one apparently in this game anywhere expects this to launch. Anywhere near that date. But of course still relevant to report on. This is an interesting run. And again we're going back to Game Rant with this one. Santa Monica Studio appears to be hiring for a God of War Ragnarok sequel. This is a job listing on a Santa Monica Studio website. The team behind the God of War franchise is seemingly on the hunt for people to help create the next entry in the franchise. According to a recent job listing on Sony, uh, Sony Santa Monica's website, the Sony-owned studio looks to be on the lookout for developers to join the team for the next God of War entry. The listing for a senior combat designer to companions. A mechanic that was first introduced, of course, in Ragnarok, where players could unlock skills for the companions. The successful candidate expect to have at least four years of experience in developing games and be able to talk in depth about combat systems, mechanics, and enemies. The listing itself may be for a wholly new combat-based game. However, with the listing specifically requiring, quote, a knowledge of God of War 2018 and God of War Ragnarok 2020, end quote, along with systems introduced during the most recent outing, it would seem to indicate that, of course, God of War may be coming back again. And you can read it. Uh, they have the little snippet in the article. You could read it. In this role, you'll assist, collaborate, take direction from the lead combat designer, lead hero designer, design and game directors as needed to own companions, characters, and boss designs from concept to implement implementation. Oh my god. Implementation completion. Sorry about that. You will also work with multiple disciplines, including animation, level design, character art, uh, visual uh, development, encounters, etc. In ensuring that characters are cohesively executed in the game, it goes on and on about these things. Interesting, if this is true. It, we, we're grabbing a little bit at a little, but hey. Could be true. Who knows? I will not be shocked. They already said they don't care about being the God of War team. So they have no problem continuing making God of War, and it makes a lot of money, and they're making um, an Amazon Prime show, I believe. I could be wrong about that. I'm pretty sure that's real, though. They're making some sort of thing with it, so I would not be shocked if this keeps going. We know that their next game will be something new. Uh, this was being led by Corey Barlog. That's the whole reason they didn't he didn't direct Ragnarok. So we'll have to see. I 100% believe there will be a sequel. I do not think... God of War is being put down anytime soon. 
Silent Hill Townfall and Wolverine were released by the end of 2044. This is a Reddit on gaming leaks and rumors. Sony dropped new financial report with a slide of upcoming releases. Majority of listed games will come out this year with exception of Suicide Squad, which released in February 2024. Games for that release windows are Wolverine and Silent Hill Townfall. And not only this kind of implies that Townfall released faster than Silent Hill 2 Remake, but Jeff Grubb in the past mentioned that Wolverine is targeting a fall 2024 release. So there, there was a bunch of slides here. You can uh, check them out online, of course. But they had a slide. It literally says, Great Upcoming Releases. Spider-Man 2, Wolverine, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, Tekken 8, Final Fantasy 16, Street Fighter 6, Crash Team Rumble, Boulder's Gate 3, Silent Hill Townfall, and Suicide Squad. There is a theming with all of that. It is interesting that they put that out. This is, again, another kind of loose thing that we're pulling from, but... It is entirely possible that all of these games could be expected around roughly the same time-ish around that kind of 2024 window. I do not think we will be seeing um, Wolverine anytime before this time next year. It might even be later than that. Who knows? Depend they said they wanted it to be a smaller Miles Morales-like Morales experience. And that's almost perfectly with how Miles Morales was released. Love to see. Very excited. Very excited for the game let's go back to the one i didn't want to lose everybody on this is of course a new xbox rule changes looking to target easy gamer score titles this is over on true achievements this is by sean carey microsoft has made significant changes to xbox achievement rules and what appears to be an attempt to stop extremely quick completions and easy gaming score titles from flooding the xbox store as per our source a developer in the id at xbox program that wishes to remain anonymous microsoft recently made several changes to its xbox game certification rules when it comes to achievements in gamer score these rules govern what is allowed when publishing games on the xbox platform and according to our source an update was made on monday may 1st 2023 so those rules that aim to stop developers from releasing easy gamer score titles that can be completed in just a few minutes or with minimal user input. What changes have they made? These, of course, refer to in, in the document as XR055 achievements in gamer score and its test fail examples. With the following line added to XR's definition, quote, all achievements represent a thorough exploration of or engagement with game content however more significantly microsoft has also added three new fail examples for the xr oh sorry xr 055 quote all achievements can be unlocked within a few minutes of starting the game end quote quote achievements do not represent a thorough exploration of or engagement with game content end quote quote achievements can be unlocked without any or minimal user input unless required as part of the core gameplay loop, end quote. Now, you can, of course, understand that saying they are specifically mentioning you cannot have achievements used in a way that can skew the market place of gamer score. Now, this is one of those things where I guess it's better late than never. People have been doing this for a very long time. There are entire games on the marketplace that... You start the game, you hit three, four buttons, and you have a thousand gamer score. The famous, famous example of this, you have to go all the way back to the Xbox 360 as one of the first games to do this, uh, specifically Avatar The Last Ember of the game on 360. You could buy the game, you could hit B three times, and I believe you have a thousand gamer score. You have, there are only three achievements in that entire game, I believe. All you have to do is hit BB, and you're done. And now you have a thousand gamer score. And there are many more examples of that on the Xbox store. That is just one of the ones I know and that someone kind of everyone kind of knows about. I think this is great to hear. There's nothing that breaks the fun. And this is the same with PlayStation as well. Hopefully PlayStation kind of implements a similar uh, rule in their kind of certification rules. There's nothing that's less fun than after a while, it's just like a race to the bottom of who plays the most bullshit games. That's not really fun. This is a guy who has 200 and... Do I have 61? Give me a second, guys. I'm going to actually double check. 
I have I have the Xbox app on the computer. I can just look really quick. I I, I, I and I am a achievement guy. Do you understand me? Do you understand? I, I've been doing this for a very long time. I've cared about achievements pretty much my entire gaming life. Let's see here. I have uh, way more than that. I I always forget because <laughs> like I forget what milestone I'm at. I have two hundred and ninety two thousand four hundred gamer score, kissing three hundred thousand. Hmm, so close. Cannot wait. So I, I know my achievements. Have I abused the achievement system in the past with easy games? Of course I have. We all have. But you kind of get out of it and you realize kind of ruins the fun. Who cares about the high game of score if you kind of cheated to get there, right? Same with the platinums on PlayStation. Who cares if you have a thousand platinums, if you have 150, if a third of them are just garbage, if ju just a waste you you pl you played the game. You hit three buttons. You played for thirty minutes. You got to play them. You got out. Isn't that not fun, right? At least to me, because it's not as fun to flaunt it, right? Oh, I have two hundred platinums, but a hundred of them are garbage. It's not really that fun, right? Then really, you have a hundred, and you just like paid some money and got more, right? Like, if they added the incentive to buy Gamer Score or, or trophies, which actually a game did that. I believe it was near Tomita. You could, with the in game currency, buy the unlocks, which I don't have a problem with that. That's, that's a whole different conversation. But at that point, pay a dollar, get a platinum trophy. That just makes it not fun. That just completely demeans the entire process. I'm hoping this begins the change. On Xbox, hopefully PlayStation follows suit. I understand there is some problems with the PlayStation side of things with this issue where they're finding themselves kind of in a similar boat where it's like all these games are just kind of ruining the fun of Platinum Trophies. Why don't we just really make Platinum Trophies worth it and have a sort of stipulation? And this is the first time we saw a major gaming giants do anything about it and i'm very happy to see that very very happy that's all for rumor round up let's start this show for the week now i have my first thing here is redfall it's just it just says redfall the reason for that is a few things one bloomberg jason schreier releases let me see if I can find it really quick. Jason Schreier, Redfall. It's paywalled, so I have no idea if this is even going to open. Inside the making of Redfall, Xbox's latest misfire. He has a whole article you can read about. Pretty much detailing everything you should, should want to know, need to know. You really ever need to know of what happened with Redfall. If you've been paying close attention... I don't think you're missing that much out of this specific story. You can also see breakdowns on many people's Twitter accounts. Let, let's uh, let's find. Oh, my God. What's his name? Is it Benji Sales? Benji Sales. Oh, my God. I'm forgetting his name. There's a guy I follow Benji Sales or something like that. He's a very good follow. He he like does kind of breakdowns and things like that. He does a lot of, of course, sale content. So let's see, just do sales. See if he comes up. Yeah. Benji Sales. B E N. J I sales. S A L E S. Let's see if he tweeted about this. He did not. Did he? He did. Just to make sure I have everything here, this is his kind of breakdown of the thing. Originally designing the games as a service with significant microtransactions, lack of direction, understaffed, roughly 70% of developers who made Prey left Arcane during the making of Redfall. Now, if you understand everything with that, nothing really super surprising. I think there's a couple things. First off, lack of direction. Obviously, look at the game. It's a mess. Clearly, everyone involved with this project didn't really know what they were doing and never really found their footing. If you read the article, uh, the higher ups at, uh, at the studio kept telling people who had worries about the game that we'll find the uh, arcane magic in the last few months of development. Apparently they said this verbatim, which is hilarious. 
and even the article itself says like that was a very common thing at um was that Bethesda or Bioware? Oh, I'm blanking. I read I read the whole thing this morning on my phone because there was a free link <laughs> that you could use. So I'm blanking on on which studio, but there was another studio that they brought up and we're like, yeah, they said the same thing. And one of the funniest things is there were uh, uh, from the article is when, of course, this was made prior to the bio. This is 20, 2018, I believe, was when they said the game was being made 23, 2019. When the buyout goes live for Microsoft, everyone involved, not everyone, but a lot of people involved actually hoped the game would be canceled or at least like delayed into the point where they could just make it a, to, into a single player game. Of course, none of that happened. Uh, Microsoft actually went full hands off and didn't touch any of it, which no, I don't think anyone who bought, who, uh, who, who was involved in the buyout, of course, like all the devs and things really expected that to happen. I think they expected Microsoft and things to come in and start not cleaning house, but kind of like directing in these things. And they, they just let them keep going. And clearly to the detriment of this game, uh, that's something Phil Spencer said on the interview with kind of funny games. Uh, a few weeks ago, the same thing where it's like, yeah, we, we didn't help them at all. And by the time we got to them, it was too late. And they just released the game knowing it was terrible. Then we see him come out and it's like, you know, we're shocked that it scored the way it did. Uh, multiple uh, tens, tens of scores lower, which is again, like, really? I don't know. That seems shocking. And they were understaffed, and I think the biggest deal, and something I'm shocked that they didn't see coming. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm being naive here. Seventy percent of 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 their staff left because they wanted to make a single player game. And if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. So I'm curious why they didn't see this coming. You don't go to Ar Arcane Austin to make a a a co-op games as a service. You go to make single player games. You don't, you don't go to naughty dog to me. And we're going to talk about them in a second. You don't go there to make not third person action adventure titles with some serious tones. So when you sit there and ask yourself, why did I join Arcane if they're going to make this co-op games as a service? You have to ask yourself, why should you stay there? And a lot of them said, yeah, why should I stay there? And they all left. Shocking that they lost most, most, if not all of their talent. They probably were able to retain a lot of their executive. The actual article says comparing um, credits in uh, one of their previous games, Prey, sorry, in Prey, they were able to see that about 70% of them left, which is, I mean, that's hilarious. It could be slightly lower, but I mean, and you're always expected to lose talent at the end of a project. That's kind of how it is now. Not there, because Bethesda is a much bigger studio than a random smaller studio, but like studios kind of lose weight after a big project because they don't really need that many people anymore unless they're going right into another project. And that might actually not even be the case anymore. Since a lot of places really need to hold talent because they're just people are getting poached and the talent pool is so low now, apparently. So I I don't know. Now, am I shocked about any of this? No. Am I surprised about any of those facts? No. I feel like we knew about a half to a two thirds, honestly, of the article off of just kind of breathing around tea leaves and hearing things. I don't have too much more to add here. Redfall is clearly a, a giant disaster. Uh, probably the biggest disaster. And but that, that's up there with Fallout 76. The only difference is this was a new IP, so it had nothing to ruin. Fallout 76 was such a big deal because it ruined Fallout for a lot of people. And they they this is another ex just another example of studios chasing the games as a service model, the Fortnite model, the Apex model, these games that the Destiny model just trying and I mean really just utterly failing. Utterly failing to the point where they just leave these projects in mass. We are seeing this over and over and over again. All of these studios just 
being decimated because they chased the trend and they didn't stick to what they knew. They knew what they had. They had the art special arcane. Now, even the article mentions that they were never commercially successful. Understandable. They were at least critically acceptable. And I imagine at least prey. I don't know. Maybe they made the money back. Maybe they were in need of revenue or at least to be able to justify their continued existence at their size. I don't know. Maybe there's more of the story of them that's chasing trends, but it's hard to not see it that way, if I'm being honest. Moving on. I mentioned it earlier. Naughty Dog is back up in this story. Of course, Naughty Dog was in the news with a giant, giant news story. Basically detailing that their multiplayer service is in trouble. They were br they brought in Bungie to kind of evaluate how factions is going. And a short, long story short, uh, it's not going well. Now, there's several reasons for this. And this is actually another story by Jason Shirey, I believe. Another great story, too. I'm actually trying to find... Naughty Dog actually had to make a statement on this. Uh, because they knew the story was coming out. There we go. Naughty Dog on Twitter. I want to read their, their pretty much apology verbatim here. Here we go. So this was posted May 26th. The article went live, I believe, the same day or the next morning. I do not remember. The Last of Us fans. We know many of you have been looking forward to hearing more about our Last of Us multiplayer game. We're incredibly proud of the job our studio has done thus far. But as development has continued, we've realized that what is best for the game is to give it more time. Our team will continue to work on the project as well as other games in development, including a brand new single player experience. We look forward to sharing more soon. We're grateful to our fantastic community for your support. Thank you for our passion for our games. It continues to drive us. Uh, they pretty much gave you a little medicine and a little sugar at the same time here, right? So they were pretty much like, hey, we're delaying the game, but you'll hear from us soon for a new, for a new single player title. So the mind immediately races with a couple things. One, let's quickly go over the Jason Schreier thing. I don't think I need his article here. I'm just going to give you from memory because I, I read this when it came out and it wasn't a huge story. Let's be honest. It wasn't that much there. So I'll quickly regale you with the biggest deal being they've kind of been struggling to keep this going. They fully scaled back completely on this project. Uh, they had pretty much a sizable portion of the studio working on this. Now, many, 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 many people have been pulled back on it, which is. I don't think I have to tell anyone at home. Not good. Uh, you don't put less people on a project and expect it to come out sooner you know so think about it that way right like you don't put less people on the project in because of positive reasons so it looks like they completely shifted development to this other title whatever it is maybe it's some sort of left behind dlc thing maybe it is see it says we've realized what's best uh, our team will continue to work on it, as well as other games of them, including a brand new single player experience. We look forward to sharing more soon. So it looks like this new single player experience is coming before the factions come out, right? So whatever that is, I'm assuming it is not their new IP. Because I feel like that wouldn't be ready. Because it was uh rumors are is they were it's between Last of Us Part 3 and a new IP. Uh, what comes first i'm leaning towards the new ip first and then we get part three to kind of close out potentially ps5's thing or the start of ps6 i don't know but it's either one of those or out of left field we get a last of us part two re-release on ps5 with enhanced things and we get a left behind dlc for last of us part two that is also a possibility I'm not really sure which one's actually going to be the one that's gonna happen i don't know i'm trying to like think of like what which one of that is the biggest possibility I, and i, I want to say 
The Last of Us Part Two on PS5 upgraded to make it look pretty, and then give it DLC and resell it to you. I don't know. I don't know. I think I think that's most possible. New trophy list, all these things. It's a new PS5 title, and then you play it that way. Maybe. I don't know. What do y'all think at home? What about that? It, going back to the article, they did bring in Bungie to kind of assess the game, and they pretty much said it doesn't feel like it's going to engage players and keep players long enough to pretty much live as a game as a service. Which is good. Which is very good. They brought them in. That's why they bought them. Brought them in. Hey, what's this look like? And they were like, mm, not great. And they were like, cool, uh, we're going to completely scale back development. We're not going to make... They're probably like, hey, we're not going to make... Uh, my, they're probably not going to make certain milestones or dates or anything. And they're like, we're going to scale back on this. We're going to completely move to whatever the thing that they mentioned in the tweet about. So they completely shift development resources to whatever the single player experience is. And we will see factions. Who knows? I mean, at this point... Who knows when we'll see this thing? Date updates. Updates. Coming soon to Xbox Game Pass. Of course, I read the Game Pass titles for the month of what you can expect. Of course, FIFA 23, you've already seen this. This is console and PC. It's also on EA. This is because of EA Play. This is already live as well. This is the older titles, of course. Eastern uh, Exorcist, Cloud Console PC, already live. Ghost Lore on console, May 18th. Uh, Planet of Lana, console and PC. That was a day one on Game Pass title. I heard that's kind of good. I kind of want to try it, but I don't know if I'm going to have enough time, to be honest. Cassette Beast on console. Massive Chalice, uh, Cloud, and, Cloud and Console. This is a great game. If you like uh, tactical strategy games, this was made by Double Fine back in... Mmm, the 2010s? Something like that? Massive Chalice. When did this come out? I'm curious about the date. When did you release? The 2015. June 1st, 2015. And I like the game fine. Railway Empire 2 Cloud Console and PC May 25th. That's available day one on Game Pass. Chicory. I heard good things about this. This just happened May 30th. This is Chicory, a color for tail. That is also on Game Pass. Lord of the Fallen launches October 13th, the current gen consoles. There's also a new trailer if you're interested in that. PC Gaming Show 2023 is on June 11th at 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern. Expanse at Telltale Series Episode 1 launches July 27th. The remaining four episodes will launch every two weeks following the launch of that. Pac-Man 99 will delist, delist on October 8th. Layers of Fear launches June 15th on PC and current gen systems. Hogwarts Legacy for Switch has been delayed to November 14th. PlusCon will be held from November 3rd through the 4th. And then Layers of Fear comes out June 15th for PC and current gen consoles. That's the show for the week. Now, of course, I end the show just like I begin with asking a question for you at home. This is something you can leave in the comments. Of course, what is queued up for the week? This could be a game, a book a comic book a tv show a movie a podcast really anything what do you have to keep it up for the weekend i am going to be very boring and repeat a couple things that's an a2 of course I'm going to be playing more legend of zelda and diablo 4 very excited about that i've not really gotten into a diablo game before i was a big boulders gate fan back in the day specifically borders gate boulders gate dark alliance one and two huge fans of that me and my dad used to play that all the time. Then I played. Keep keep stick with me. PS2 Champions of Norath. I don't know if anyone even at home even played that game. There's a great. I mean, that was a great game. Champions of Norath one and two. Great game. Everyone at home, uh, if you are a fan of that top down Diablo esque gameplay, those were great, great, great PS2 games. Play them however you want. Boulder's Gate Dark Alliance one and two have been ported, and. Champions of Norath I don't believe is available in any way. Other than the way you're thinking of at home. Wink, wink. Aside from that, that's my weekend. I don't really have too big of plans. No movies or anything fun like that. Just just gaming and hanging out. Probably going to do some yard work this weekend. I need to trim. I got vines 
crazy overgrowth coming over my fence. I trimmed off some of it already. I need to trim more of it. So I'm going to be trimming some more stuff, doing some more yard work. Very excited for this. Car carrying the garden, of course. I had this dill plant to, to, growing dill like crazy. Last year, I burned it to a crisp. I put it closer to the house. Now it's going growing bountifully, beautifully, beautifully. Trimmed it a little bit. You know, took off all the dead stuff. Looks much prettier now. Very excited about that. I'm not, I'm not a big pruning guy, so I'm not I'm not very good at the pruning. I need to get better at that. I need to do some research. Why, how, when to prune. Learn more about that stuff. Aside from that, I am done with this week's show. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, you can check us out on patreon.com slash achievers to support the show directly if you'd like to support it financially. If you would not like to do that, then you, of course, support us freely. Like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend, all these easy things that you could do to support the show. But until next time, go Chief.